welcome to the Father State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today, I have with me a local Black Student Union representative. I have with me Josh Daniel, president of the Black Student Union at Antelope Valley College in California. Thanks for coming, Josh. Thank you for having me. Do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? Um, I would say, I would say, I would agree with that. You I would, would agree with that in terms of the, the environment uh, and the atmosphere of the world that we're living in. There's a lot of crazy things going on right now. Get, how, an example, give me an example of crazy things that are going on now. Uh, I would say in the top three right now, <laughs> top three craziest things going on right now, I would say uh, racism is a really big thing right now. Racism? Racism is a big thing right now. I would say um, California, if we're talking about California, I would say homelessness is a really big yeah. issue. Sure is. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty lost with that third one. It's a lot competing right. for that third spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is it possible to overcome the fallen state? That's out of humans' hands, I would say, to leave that one up to God on that one. And speaking of God, you're a Christian? I... W <laughs> what are we calling, what are, let's define Christian. Are we defining Christian by some, an individual that follows Christ? Are you a Christian? Uh, we have to define what it is uh, first. So you don't know if you want or not unless I define it? I mean, because if, if it's saying that we're, if a Christian is somebody that is trying to live their best life, right, trying to do good and things like that, yes, I'm a Christian if we're going by those standards. If we're going by the, the traditional go to church every Sunday, go to Bible study on the Wednesdays type thing, no, uh, I wouldn't consider myself. So you're a Christian that doesn't go to church and Bible study? No, I don't, I don't do that. I was raised Jehovah's Witness. Oh, you were? I was raised Jehovah's Witness until I was like 15. Wow, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that, man. There's <laughs> nothing to be sorry that's, about. That's, more, that's, that's worse than so-called racism, right? Would you rather, be, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that. So you're 20, how old are you now? 20, I just, just turned 20, uh, September 19th. Really, happy yeah. birthday, happy belated birthday. Thank you. Is it difficult being a Christian in college today for you? Uh, no, if you have a pretty strong moral compass, you, you good. You know, if your ethics are on point, you know, you can't really be uh, deterred too much, you know. Do they, do uh, the enemies of Christianity know that you are a Christian on campus? Who are the enemies of, of Christianity? Like atheists? The, the Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, the radicals that, the radical homosexuals and those who hate God and hate Christians. Do you have to deal with that at all at school? Um, we don't, nothing, you know, extreme. I mean, we have clubs that are, we have a Pride Advocates Club. Um, Pro, what does that mean, Pride? That's, that's what they, that's what they call their club. I mean, oh, this, the homosexual. It's a yeah. It's like a it's a gay club on oh, campus. I see. And what are they proud of? Uh, I, I guess being homosexual. And how do you feel about that? Should got, they be proud of that? Yeah, nothing to do with me. Should they? <laughs> it got nothing to do with me. So should I'm they not, be proud as a Christian? Should they be proud of that? Or uh, should that be something they should overcome? Uh, I, I can't necessarily say that's that's something that they have to overcome. I mean, as a Christian, you can't say that. See, that's why that's why I was trying to define what Christian is because I'm not the traditional Christian that that is like a that is a like a homophobe and things like that. I really uh, Christians are homophobe. Yeah. And and why do you say that? I mean, they wouldn't. If you are you Christian? Yes. Okay, so like if you had kids in in, in your household and they ended up being they grew up to be homosexuals. I mean, how, would you like that or would you not care? Or would you tell them like, no, I'm not really cool with that? I would cancel them out. Okay, so they would like no would longer erase be- erase them from the map. So they would no longer would be your child. throw them out in the wilderness. Well then that's not, that's not unconditional love, is no, it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I wouldn't accept the fact that they're like that, but I wouldn't resent them for being that way. Okay. Yeah, well, I yeah. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be personal. That's my thing. I'm, I'm not homophobic at all. I personally, I just really, their sexuality has nothing to do with mine. Is so, it normal or abnormal lifestyle? Is it biologically normal? No, because it's not, you can't have 
reproduce with uh, two men or two women. Right. But um, I, I'd say 2018, it's, it's become normalized. But in your opinion, is it a normal way of living or an abnormal way of living? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's really whatever they, they choose. But what do you think? It doesn't matter what thinking. I think. It doesn't matter what I think. No, your opinion is important to you, right? Yeah, to me, but right. it doesn't, it doesn't so really matter. And so to you, is it abnormal or normal lifestyle? Uh, right, right now, currently, I would say that it's, uh, like I said, biologically, no. It, it, it doesn't work <laughs> biologically, <laughs> but, I mean, whatever flush they vote, I, I can't. I really just, I really don't care enough to put my time and energy into what somebody else is doing with another right. partner. Right, and that's good. I don't, yeah, I, it just but doesn't But is it a me. normal, abnormal lifestyle? Oh, a li okay, you're saying lifestyle. Yes. Uh, currently, it is now. But to you, is it normal or abnormal lifestyle? Am <laughs> I <laughs> Okay, what kind of answer do you want? You want a PC answer? No, I want your honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want my, if you want my honest answer, it's uh, it's normal, I guess you could say. So it's you, Josh, Daniel, it's say been. That. Ha I'm, I'll, I'll say it's, it's been happening since since junk since. Right, but Josh Daniel says that living a lifestyle as a homosexual is a normal lifestyle. Yes. I'm sorry? Yeah. Is being a heterosexual, is that normal or abnormal? That's normal as well. Uh, both are normal? Both of them are normal. Amazing. Now, they're considered normal now, yeah. I'm sorry? They're considered normal now. What is the purpose of the Black, Black, uh, Black Student Union at Antelope <coughs> Valley College? What is the purpose of that? I, it may, it may be a different purpose from when it started, because when I, when I came there, it had already started like five years before that. Okay. You're but, the president uh, of it now, right? Yeah, yeah. When I first went, when I first came there, I was already like into it. Um, but I would say, as a president, um, my goal or our mission statement is to kind of fix the gaps that are at our school. Uh, we we are at a, a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution. Right, the students are not predominantly white. The majority of the students are Hispanic. It's like sixty-five percent Hispanic. Really, at Antelope Valley College, but the faculty and staff are like all all white. Right, so um, I work. I also work at the at the college, and um, I work in the theater. And there was an event where they had all the faculty and staff just go over things that they need to know for the coming school year. And it's 400 something staff, 400, 500 staff. And I honestly can say it was about 30 black teachers or and not even teachers, just staff. They might not be teachers, they might be technical analysts, they might be uh, whatever. But we just, we just seen that the numbers of African-American, not even African-American, just minority teachers there are at a very low rate. So uh, what we do is we try to nurture nurture the black student and making sure that he is academically or she's academically successful while they're at an institution that uh, the faculty and staff don't look like them. Amazing. And how do you nurture them? What do you do exactly? By letting them by letting them know that uh, they have value and they have worth. Um, they don't know that already before they get there? A lot of students don't. Oh. And so you don't, you, do, you, do you guys believe that the white teachers <coughs> were, would not let them know they have value? No, no, we don't, we don't think that the white teachers, all the white teachers are like, yo, we hate these black students. It's not, we don't think that. But I have verbatim, not verbatim, um, I have directly heard teachers say things like that, but that's not the majority of white teachers they on campus. They have said things like what? Um, there's been teachers that are very, very open about not liking students of color and um, What have they said? Give me an example of what they've said. Uh, I, don't, 
I don't like black students on the campus. So you've heard te white teach some white yeah. teachers say, "Cause I, I don't like black students." Yeah, because I campus. since I work there, I I go to different events and I I'm in the inner school more than right. more than a traditional student that just goes to class and go home. Right. Um, so I've definitely heard in meetings and things like that. Well, maybe we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't do this because. That's not in our best, in our best interest. The teachers are saying that, but it's not about the, the teachers' best interest. It's about and they the said that in front of you. Yeah. I and so, heard that. If, if it's a negative, why would they say it in front of you? Why wouldn't they? I mean, I feel that if they feel strong enough about something, they'll say it in front of anybody. You will. You wouldn't denounce Christianity in a room full of atheists. And so, but these teachers run the risk of getting in trouble. If they're saying, I don't like black students at the school in front of a black man that's the president of the Black Student Union right. at uh, Valley, Antelope Valley College, couldn't they get in trouble for saying that? Uh, it depends on who else is in the room. Because if there are other people that believe that same thing. Other white people? It doesn't matter who it is. If it's other people that believe that they don't necessarily need to uh, nurture the, a, a black student in their academic success and their academic journey, then they wouldn't well, get in trouble. But I don't understand, they were not afraid that you would report them? Uh, some of them don't really, some of them don't really care. How do you know that? Because they probably have been, I know, I, of course I'm not gonna say any names, but there's teachers or faculty and staff that have been there for years, right? Years and years. Um, and they have had complaint after complaint after complaint, but they're still there, right? right? So that obviously means that whoever they are reporting to and whoever is relaying the message that they are giving to their students, right. that they, they co-sign that behavior. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, what else do? You, what other thing you do as a black student union? What is the other? Another purpose? Um, we we want to make sure that we um, that we are heard, and we're trying to be the voice of the unheard black student on campus. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of students that just feel that their voices aren't recognized and heard in what way, and by whom? Needs. I would say needs. And what are the needs? Uh. For one, uh, a big need is the type of teachers that we would like to have on campus. Um, there are some teachers that are, it seems like they're there for like just a paycheck, you know? Um, and they're really not enthused about the, the subject that they teach. Right. So, and I feel like that goes around the board though, with white students, Mexican students, whatever. Right. You know, the teacher needs to be as enthused if he would like that to be reciprocated in class. Do black students need black teachers at a predominantly white university? Yes. You do need black teachers. Why? Yes, you need black, black teachers, you need Mexican teachers, you need Asian teachers. Why? Um, statistically speaking, uh, students do better when their teachers look like them. Why? Because they can relate. In what way? For a perfect example, <laughs> a few semesters ago I had an African American history class and the teacher was a white woman. Right? Is she able to learn African American history? Of course. She has her master's in it. Of course she has the ability to. But I, I personally do not relate to what she's saying when, when we are talking about, um, she may say, oh, the, the, the struggle of the black man or the black woman, it's, it's such a struggle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm just like, how would you? Know I that. Enjoy, yeah. How would you know that? You know, so it's hard to relate to a teacher like that. Really? Yes. Uh, so, if black students need black teachers, why do you go to a predominantly white school with white teachers? Why don't you go to a black school? Oh, I'm going or, to a black school. That's but, where I'm trying to go. But right why now. do black kids go to a predominantly white school if they know they feel this way about the white teacher? Why not just go to a black school? Well, it's not that simple. You can't just say get out. You can't just graduate high school and say, "Oh, I just want to go here, so I'm going to go there." But why even apply at a white school, knowing you're not going to be happy, your needs are not going to be met, and if you feel your needs are not going to be met, why even apply at a white school? Uh, 
Well, for Antelope Valley College, this is, since it's a community college, it's much more easier to go to a community college and into a four year. It's cheaper that way. Uh, so it might be for financial issues. And why did you go there? I went, first of all, I didn't even want to go to college, <laughs> if we're being honest. You did not want to go to college? Oh, no. Why did you go? Uh, no. uh, it started off with my father saying, I'm not raising no grown man. So, you know, and that's totally fine. I understand that. Right. Uh, he said, you, the only way you can stay in this house is if you go to college. Really? Yeah. And so you went to college so you could stay at home with your parents? At the time, yeah, because I finished, I finished high school when I was 17. Oh, I see. And I didn't have Why didn't you just or, get a job at 17? One job probably is not sufficient enough to keep me afloat you with the house and a car. Yeah, but that's, you know, I didn't, at the time I wasn't ready. Oh, I at see. At 17. Are you ready now? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm trying to go. I'm, well, I'm trying to go to another college so right now. So why don't you drop out of school and get a job? Well, that's not, everything changed now. Since I started, uh -huh. it's been different now. What are you majoring in? I'm a theater arts major. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why black kids, some black kids feel that white teachers can't teach them in the same manner any black teacher teaches them. I don't understand, I don't get that. What's well, about? Relatability, again, like I said. But how, um, you want to like relate like a soul brother? Not even in that, not even in that sense. I would just like, I, w I would like, if we're talking about technology, right? I don't want to hear technology from somebody that knows nothing about technology. But if it's a teacher, no matter what the color, they already know, that's why they're a teacher. So they know about technology, right? But that's, I'm saying the relatability aspect of it is not there. So, so like, it's hard to be like cool with your teacher. It's hard to be in with terms of- With a white teacher? No, 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 not with a white teacher. I'm saying, for me, I'm saying with like the African American history, uh, like, a, like a white teacher teaching that why to a group of black students. So like, give me an example of being cool with the black so okay. called Afro Americans. I have a like I have a teacher there that me and him are like super cool. Like we we texting each other. Well, you you good? What you doing today? Type type thing. Like we cool, okay. right? It's not because it's not even because he's black. He's not even an African American history teacher. He's an English teacher. Right. Um, but the fact that I he could uh, talk about topics uh, in his personal life or in this academic journey that we are all going through as college students we can relate to that as black students. If black students didn't hate white people, would they be able to relate to them then? <laughs> they don't. I never said hate. You said hate. Right. I didn't say hate. Um, and, and that's my question. I don't question. think black students hate white students. Then why I can't mean white they, teachers, excuse me. Well, then why can't they relate then? Because that's the only thing that would divide them is their anger or resentment of white teachers and white people. Just, it's not in, they're not into the same the same things or they don't understand this. It's, it's a different narrative, I would say that, with a, from a white teacher and their, and their life or whatever they've done and whatever they have to deal with when it comes to finances or societal issues or whatever. So if a broke black person goes <coughs> to a white teacher and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Teacher, I'm broke, can you direct me to the finance department and help me get it? That teacher wouldn't be able to you get finance. Would that, teacher be, that white teacher relate to that? That's not relatability, that's direction. You go, all you have to say is it's right here. So, so if the white teacher said, okay, so brother, uh, you African Mary, African sister, come on, let me have your sister, then that's related? No, if they <laughs> that's, said, not, that's absolutely not related. If they said, I, I know how you feel, come on, let me go down here and help you. Is no. that related? No, that's, how you, how that's, you, that's just, uh, how, do you, how do you relate, man? Relatability has nothing to do with how they're talking or <laughs> vernacular or anything But what's like relating, that. though? I don't get the relating thing. It's I really don't get the relating thing. The, the narrative, the whole narrative is different from an African, it's not, now, now we're not even talking about teachers and students, now we're talking about people. Right. The narrative and what white people have dealt with and what African Americans have dealt with from colonial times to now, totally different and that's you can't dispute that that's facts what have you as a black american dealt with that a white person at your school 
haven't dealt with. At your age, same thing. What have you dealt with that they haven't dealt with? Well, just with my club. It's harder to get certain things approved. You know, if we want to have an event, okay. it, it takes a little longer. It takes a little longer. It, it, when we try to get, <clears throat> excuse me, money out of our account, um, it takes a little longer than it would uh, other students. And I tried this. I did a survey, and I went and I asked the, the uh, STEM club. I went and asked the, uh, the Alpha Iota club. These are clubs that are predominantly white. How long did it take you to get your money out of your account? Three days? Two days? Oh, okay, well... Um, they told us a month or two. So I just would, why is that? It's that hard, it's like that for Republican clubs on campuses as well. Republican white clubs to get money to sponsor speakers. Whereas for white liberal clubs or black liberal clubs, it's not as hard. It's harder for a white Republican club than it is for your club. Is that racism? No, because... <laughs> You said, well, first of all, we don't even have those types of clubs. We don't have that kind of club, right? Uh, a Republican club. They might have that at a four-year uh, right. USC or something like that. But uh, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't call that racism. What would you call that? What did you? I'm sorry, I can't remember what you, you were said. Saying. It's hard you're for the black student unions to get money to do functions. Right, and you were saying functions. Republican clubs can't do that as well. It's hard for them too. Oh, okay. The same manner is that racism? No, I would say that is that has a depending on whoever the powers that be that are allowing them to do that. Uh -huh. I would say they just may not be Republican, right? They might be Democrat or they might be conservative. Whatever. So, it is. so how did you become president of this Black Student Union? Uh, you walking down the road one day and they're like, you know <laughs> what, Josh, you're um, a man. No, it started off my first. I started college in fall of 2016, mm. and. Um, they have a club rush, which is club rushes. Uh, just all the clubs are out there in the quad area. This is like the common area. And they're just trying to recruit. So, okay. they, so they see one person, they say, hey, hey you want to come to Black Student Union? Uh, one of my good friends, uh, Eric, he's still a good friend. He was the ICC representative at the time. And he called me over, he said, uh, and we just had a conversation at first, just about uh, academics and what's your goal, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, then he told me about the Black Student Union. I was very interested, and then uh, I became treasurer of the Black Student Union my first semester, and then right after that, I've been president ever since. Amazing. Are you in support of a white student union on campus? There are white student unions, it just has different names. That's the Alpha Iota Club. Those are those clubs. That's a frat house or something, right? Well, that's at our uh, school. Yeah. It's not a frat. It's, I don't even know what the club is, but it's definitely an all-white club. And, and are clubs, you in support of that? They have. Are you happy to see that? That's fine with me. They can have white clubs. And nothing wrong with that. They should have it too. Yeah, if, if you would like to have a, a club where um, the majority of the students are are white, whatever your mission is, uh, it, I don't know. Whatever you are trying to do. And you're happy about that? I'm not. I'm not unhappy with it, okay. but uh, if, it has not, if it's not affecting our club, that's all I'm worried about. All right. And now, a word from our sponsor. We are back! 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 They were here for the merch? Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. Um, you also belong to something called another group that called A2 Men. Yes. M E N D. Yes. And it's about black men. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful, phenomenal uh, program that I'm in. And we just started a club there because it's, it's really a, a program, but then it, you know, 
shift Is it, it for blacks club. only? Black men only? We no, we have Hispanics in the club. Is it for white men too? They can if they want to join, but uh, the the goal is African Americans. Okay. So what, did you did you invite the Hispanics to come in, or they came and knocked on the door? Hey, we want to come in. Well, they were fr- they were like friends of ours. Okay. A few members of our we we know them, and they were into oh that club. Okay, well, is it just for black people? I'm like no, you can. Okay. If you want to join? Join. Are you friends with any white men there at school? Absolutely. And they didn't ask to join. No. Did you invite them to? No. Why not? not? Uh, because it's not necessarily for them. Uh, if they don't, if they don't bring it up, I'm not going to bring it up. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, the same with the Hispanics. I didn't bring right. it up to the Hispanics. They. And, and so, attention. what's the purpose? Um, what it is is these group of African American doctors, who are all of our mentors in the club, <clears throat> in the program. Excuse me. Uh, they all came together and they realized that statistically, in the California community college system, African American males are entering community colleges at a low rate, but graduating at an even lower rate. So they wanted to say, well, well what is that? How can, we, how can we fix that and change that, right. that demographic? So um, they started, I think there was like 10 of them in the beginning. And they've been 10, doing, of, these 10 doctor- of these doctors, of these African-American doctors. And, uh, okay. and they've been going strong for about, about 11 years now, just trying to uh, make African-Americans males as professional as they can be and uh, teach them how to network. That's what A2 men stands for. It's A2 African American male education and network and development. Oh, okay. So that's that's what it's all about. And why are so many black g- guys f- are dropping out or not going to college? Um, I would say, I'm gonna first tackle the, the dropping out aspect of it. Somebody, a few people that we know at the college have dropped out for the purpose of they have families that they need to support. And right now, um, that's not really conducive to the progression of uplifting their families. And when you say care family, they have children? Uh, children, or they might have a mother and father that is uh, elderly. Uh, they okay. may need to take care of them. All right. Uh, so they feel that right now, I can't do school. I may need to work right now, I may need to work at a warehouse, I may need to have two jobs, like you right. said, to provide for my family. And do these doctors show them how to get around that, or do they encourage them to go and take care of your family? No, they try to teach them, teach us that whatever obstacle comes your way, you, you, gotta, you gotta push through, you have to push through. And is there another reason why there they are fewer black men going to college? Um, I would say, de- really environmental or the product of their environment. You know, oh, yeah. if they're not taught that, they're not gonna go. I've noticed that most black men, young and old, are beta males. Okay. Have you noticed that? Beta! Mm. Beta male, okay. not af- I wouldn't. Af- I wouldn't 100% dispute that. Right, and why are they beta males? Uh, again, product of their environment. Meaning what? Uh, uh, they weren't taught to be alpha. <laughs> and not taught to be alpha, or they don't have, or they might not have alpha men as role models. Right. You know, They're regardless of it being a black male that's alpha male. Because most of them are born to single women, right? Only mothers, only no fathers are around in many cases. In many cases. Yeah. Well, that's in every every group has that. But I'm talking about the black beta males. Okay. Most of them are born to single mothers, right? I wouldn't. I would dispute that. You would why? Yeah, because I know a lot of people, I know a lot of couples that are together that Well, there are children. some, yeah, but most are not, right? 77% of black babies are born out of wedlock to black women who were born in America. So that's okay. a large number. Right. Do you think that that affects or causes them to become beta as well? No, because there are some very uh, strong black women that are able to take their child into a different direction. Right, but it's the wrong direction. But I would say this, I would say, statistically speaking, that no matter what race it is, a child would be better um, when it comes to uh, financial maturity and things like that, when they have two parents in the household. Right. So I would agree with that. I grew up with two parents in the household. Right. So I would definitely. So then you agree that most of these black guys are beta males because they're born to single mothers? No, I would not say that. 
And, and why not? I would say it's, uh, it has to do with the males that are in their life, that those males, uh, due to issues of uh, maybe unemployment and maybe things of that nature, that cause them to be very, very non-productive and things like that, those might be the men that are around. But not the beta mothers who are creating beta sons? I can't, I, you're generalizing that. I can't generalize or say that about black women. But you just said it about the black men. Yeah, because you're saying that, you're saying that black males that are growing up to be beta males are beta males because of the, their mothers. That's what you're saying? Right. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would dispute that. And you said that there are strong black women? Yes, there's very strong What's a black strong woman? black woman? A woman that is independent and doesn't necessarily need a man to financially hold her down. Really? Yeah. And it's those type of women who are screwing up the boys? Uh, I wouldn't say that. How so? Are black women stronger than black men? <laughs> <laughs> um... Are you saying in general or in a certain context? Are black women stronger than black men? I would say that we are equal. We are equal. So black men are as equally strong as a black woman? Yeah. So they're like women then? No, 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 no. There is strength, which we're talking about, and then now you're saying you're bringing femininity into the equation. I'm not saying that men are feminine. Uh, and that's why they relate to black women. They don't but, relate but you that are way. saying that black women are strong and black men are strong. Yes. And they are equal. Yeah. In terms of strength, yes. So the black man has the same strength that a black woman has. Yes. They have the same ability and capability to do things. Beta. In terms of uh, raising children. Beta. No, I wouldn't say that. Why would a man be like a woman in strength? That doesn't make sense. If you're not a beta. It, okay, physical strength, of course. So not. you have the same strength as a black woman has? I have the same capability and the capacity to do certain things as a black woman. Anything that I could do in a, in a financial uh, situation, anything when it comes to academics, black women can do what I... And so you are the same as strength as a woman? Yes. Really? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say yes. What, you, so you, you would say that black women are... Not as strong as black men? They're not, it's, not that black, it's, it's not that black women are strong, it's just that the men are weak. Ah, no I such see. thing as a strong black woman. It's just weak men. <laughs> <laughs> would so, you agree to that? No, I absolutely would not agree with that. There are, it, there are black women that are very strong. I was like, so the characteristics that are in a weak male couldn't be in a black woman? It isn't a black woman. That's where it came from. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Men who are weak are just like their mothers. But they're, why are their mothers weak? Because they were made that way. Women are made that way? They're to be weaker than a man. In, in what? In general? Are we talking, are we... Do you think men and women are this equal or the same? Is there a difference between men and women? Yeah, there's a huge difference between men and women. And what's the difference? Uh, currently today, I mean, there are... There's a huge sexism going on. There's this whole Me Too movement going on. Biologically, they can't do the same things. I mean, of course, there are big differences, but in terms so of- So the difference between men is uh, uh, the women protesting? What's the difference between men and women, or a man and a woman? I would say the, the difference is treatment, how they get treated by the dominant society. So women dominate men? No, men, men are uh, superior at this moment right now. Over women? Yeah. And superior in what way? Uh, when it comes to power, when it comes to economic power, it comes to uh, governmental power, things like that. And why do you believe something like that? I don't believe it, it's a fact. But what, where's the proof of it? What yeah. type of fact? Give me a fact. The proof is the, the people that make all of these decisions and things. Uh, most likely, well, not even. I'm not even gonna say most likely because that means that it's an assumption. <clears throat> I would say the people that are making these decisions for our country or making these local decisions, or whatever, are men. And you mean an example? Oh, I'm sorry. An example of, of, of men how who are, you mean 
give me uh, a decision that most men are making. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Um, definitely. Or have when made. It, when it comes to incarceration rates and things like that, definitely. I would say uh, older and middle-aged white men are, are making the, the most decisions for our country right now. To incarcerate uh, men? Well, I'm just saying that's one example. Right. That's one example. So if women were making those decisions, would those men be still going to jail or not? I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah of course. Uh, but uh, give me a good one. That's not a good one. That's not a good one? What's the difference between men and women? Other than body parts. <laughs> um, well, like I said, there's all, there's all, it, it's been a huge wage gap ever since there's been employment in this country. There's not a wage gap between men and women. There's not? No. So, when, so men get paid the same? Because of this whole affirmative action and victimhood mentality, women are making more money than men, and they shouldn't because the men have been there longer. Oh, okay. And women take off more. So when they do the same job, they shouldn't? Not if they have not done the same time. Time. So in. let's say that you work at a job for 30 years, right. making $100 an hour, right? Okay. And some woman comes in, brand new to the job, should she automatically get $100 an hour? Is she qualified? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it would come down to. So she should get $100 an hour starting out on the job. Now, the, of course, the money she that get, you have been there 30 years to get, work your way up. Did I, did you, I start off with $100 an hour? No, you're making that now due to time put in. Okay. And, you know, you're good okay. at what you do. You put in the time, <laughs> and now you earn this money. Right. Some woman comes in brand new. Could, should she start out with $100 an hour? If there's a standard rate, then... Absolutely not. Nobody should be able to do that. So there is not unfair there that they start at the bottom, right? Women uh, should, should women start at the bottom? Anybody coming into a uh, work environment should start at the bottom. How about women? No, I don't think women or men should necessarily start at the, at the bottom based off of their gender. They should start based off of experience. How about women? Women starting at the bottom? If they're coming into this workforce brand new, they should start at the base rate. Is that the bottom? You could, yeah, you could say it's the bottom. Do you say that it's the bottom? Uh, I wouldn't say because I feel like bottom has a negative connotation to it. <laughs> uh, so I would say... Bottom is a good place to start. Is it? It's the best place to start. <laughs> okay. You don't agree with that? I mean, I'm just saying, when you say bottom, if somebody says, like, you know, you hear these rappers say, I started from the bottom, right? Is that necessarily a good place? Because we all yes. know what he's talking about. He's talking about the hood. I started from the bottom. No, I mean, he started at the bottom. It what is the bottom? His, you don't know what the bottom is? I know what the What's bottom is. What's your degree is. in? Uh, theater, theater arts. I'm not, I don't have it yet. Of course, oh. I'm still in college. Uh -huh. yeah. So you don't know what it means to start at the bottom? I know what it is. It sounds and like you are interpreting it different than is, what is I Is that a bad thing, to start at the bottom? No and yes. <laughs> yeah, I would say yes and no. Because if you're starting at the bottom based off of your gender, no, that, that's not So fair. if you're a woman starting at the bottom, you're a female starting at the bottom, that's a bad thing? Because you're a woman? Yes. No, you are a woman, not because you're a woman. A woman comes in, okay. she has to start at the bottom. Is right. that a bad thing? No, if, like I said, just if a man can do that too, if a man starts at a company and he starts at the bottom, then that's, should a man start at the bottom? But what, what, I don't understand that. Let's say that a man comes in right. and a woman comes in. Okay. Uh, the woman starts at the bottom, but the man starts right above her. Why? Because he may be smarter or harder or, or whatever. Would that be unfair? Yes. Why? Because if they, let's say they, they both went to school for something and they, now they're, it's time to get the job. And they both go out to get the job. They both have master's degrees in education or whatever. So they go to a college and they apply for a college. And... They apply for the same job, All right? And then the man gets paid more. I don't. I just don't see the. But the doesn't logic. the company have a right to decide that for itself? It no, that means I, that they're maybe discriminating they found against a reason, gender and race. Maybe they found a reason to pay this man a little bit more, and pay this woman at the bottom for a reason. Something that they found out or discovered about them during the interview. Would that be wrong? Yes. That would be wrong. Because that's discrimination. 
You wouldn't think that that's discrimination? If you, try, if you were trying to work somewhere and you have the degree, you have the qualifications, right? Uh-huh. And then they say, well, we're going to pay her more because what? You guys say have the same qualifications. You guys both have a master's or whatever the degree is. And so it's wrong to discriminate? Yes. It's wrong to discriminate? Yes. You don't discriminate? No, I don't discriminate. You never discriminate? Why would I discriminate? You don't ever discriminate. Now, see, look, you tried to get Tariq Nasheed on this one. I remember. I watched that one. <laughs> I watched that one. And you, and you tried to get him on that discrimination thing. <laughs> right. Um, discrimination is, I would say my definition of, this, well, not even my definition, what discrimination is. I wouldn't necessarily do that. You don't ever discriminate? I, tr- I try my absolute hardest not to. Do you discriminate? No. Okay. Since you do you date white girls? Answer, no. You don't date white girls. I don't date white. I don't date white women. Um, not because is that discrimination? Can I explain? <laughs> can I explain? Um, no, it's not discrimination. Why because not? She's white. It's not because she's white. Why That's is why it? I don't date her. I don't uh, date outside of my race at all because in order, what I want for African Americans in this country and in all countries is for there to be. Um, equal rights and a system for us to a system of empowerment and advancement right in order to build a system that is catered to the historically disenfranchised which would be us not me you're not black i'm not disenfranchised (laughs) yeah okay (laughs) um but you can you agree that african americans have been and are disenfranchised? I would disagree to that too. Okay, well, let me, let me finish my point. <laughs> um, <laughs> when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to creating a system of improvement for African Americans, I do not see how um, uh, a brother could get with somebody outside of their race and then create that system of of improvement. So be, because you want to make this system better for the blacks, you only date black women, right? Yes. So that's discrimination. I wouldn't say it's not discrimination because it it's is. not based off of race. It's not based because it's a oh, white, white woman. You're not trying to make this white woman life better. No. Well, they seem to be uh, pretty up there. So you're discriminating. I'm not discriminating because would you marry? Would race. you date a poor white woman? that needs you to make her life better? Would you, marry, would you date her? I wouldn't date anybody that needs me to make them, to get them out of no. the financial hiccup. No, would you date a, a poor white woman? Or a white woman that just, <coughs> for whatever reason. She could be rich or poor, I, I wouldn't do it. Really, how about Hispanic? No. You wouldn't date, okay. No one do Hispanic either. Is it racist to uh, marry or date, date or marry outside your race? Your race? It's not racist. It's not racist? I don't, I personally don't do that, but I'm not mad at any other brother that gets with a white woman, as long as you, get with her and you don't down black women like oh i get with white women because black women are blah blah blah. that's my issue i don't Do you like women. agree that many uh, most black women are blah 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 i totally would dispute you on that are you a, yeah. um what is the state of black men i gotta move a what, little bit what, what is blah 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 i don't know you said it okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay go ahead what did you mean by blah 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 uh, I totally forgot what I even said it in the context in, but you I said, didn't mean it in that <laughs> your context. But I, I only repeated what you said. I okay, didn't. well, you said, can you admit, okay, that's what you're saying. You were saying, can you admit that black women are blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, no, I was saying, I was saying, uh, blah, blah, blah is, is BS. Are that's you, blah, blah, blah is a bad thing, Oh, I, I guess you could say. So okay. I wouldn't, I would dispute that, you saying that. African American women are. Blah, what are blah. the state of black men in America today? Uh, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous uh, in terms of. Uh, that's why we have that amend that amend program because it's, it's dangerous for, for us out here. In, in terms of what? Uh, when it comes to uh, police involvement and police interactions and things like that. In, in terms of what? Police interactions and. They don't know how to act with cops. <laughs> Let's switch that. Yeah, let's <laughs> say the police don't know how to, to act with African Americans. What should a cop, a white cop do if he stops a black man or woman and she gives him lip service rather than following the instructions, doing what the cops say? How should a cop do when they start acting out? What should the 
A white or black, but well, what should first, a white cop do? The first thing they should do is not shoot them. Let's let's no. Let's what first should talk they do? That. Because well, that's what's happening. Though. They don't know if their lives are on the line or not. If the person is acting out, the cop has to protect, protect himself. So if is I that right or not? That no, that's not. So why would you think that your life is in jeopardy because I'm yelling at you? Because you don't know this person is angry. You don't know what they're gonna do. You don't know if they have a gun or not. Okay, that's fair. You, you gotta put yourself, protect yourself. Is that's, that right? Yeah, I I would agree with that. Okay. If somebody is being uh, irate, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. But I don't think that the answer should be death. It wouldn't be if they don't overreact. If the blacks don't overreact. Okay. You so, agree? No, I no, I do not agree. So with the cop would just shoot them anyway. Yeah, there's video proof of that. So the cops, the white, are you referring to white cops or all cops? Blacks and whites and Hispanics and others? Um, I would say the the majority of cops that are, are shooting African Americans are, are white. And are they doing this just because they have nothing else to do? <laughs> you, that's the question I asked them. I won't Do you why. believe that? I feel like that is a form of white supremacy to try to eliminate, try to eliminate uh, African-American males, because, I mean, it's happening to African-American women as well. That's so yes. amazing, man. The it average is black man isn't worth a dime anyway. They have nothing to offer. They have no strength. They don't have any money or anything. What is it? Why would they want to get kill the black man? He's not a competition with them at all. So you, why would white men want to kill them? That's crazy you said that. So you said they're not, they're not worth 10 cents. A, a, a dime, dime, yeah. A dime. So why would the white men want to take them out? Are you worth a dime? I am because I'm not into the black thing. So you're not, what, what, what would you consider yourself? Uh, an American who happened to be black, loving what's right and doing what's right. Okay. But you say having to be black. So you are acknowledging that you are black. As the ace of space, okay. but I'm not into it. Okay. It, um, it's not my first agenda. Okay. My first agenda is doing what's right and loving what's right and treating all people the same. Right. And so with, why would white men or white cops need to take blacks out? They have nothing to offer. There's no competition. There's no competition? What is the competition between black men and white men? Well, uh, if we just look at what history is telling us, there's, not, there's nothing that I'm telling you. This is history and there's a facts that... Um, African Americans contribute a lot to the Tell me society. what competition, where's the competition between black men and white men, white cops and black men, that would cause white people to want to take them out? What is it that black men have to offer that will make white people want to kill them? It's not necessarily what they have to offer. It's, it's these positions of power. If I, if, if, if I could take you off of your pedestal, right, so you don't even have the opportunity to climb the climb the economical ladder, whatever you want to say, right? Or the, the power ladder, right? If you can't climb that, then my job is is done. I don't want I don't want African Americans in power. Is what But there's nothing about black men to indicate that they can do that. They don't have anything going on to say this man can climb this ladder and take something from me. They don't? Yeah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a prime example because I'm in college. I'm an African-American male that's in college. But right no now. one's trying to take you out either. How do you know that? I just told you that, that the Black Student Union, we're not getting the same treatment as other clubs. Yeah, but you mentioned money. Everybody get mad when they can't get money. Okay, it's not about money. It's also events. We're trying to throw events. Okay, but that has nothing to do with your race. I got to ask you this really fast, all right? I noticed that most black men are angry. <laughs> okay. Have you noticed that? No. You haven't noticed that most black men have anger. I noticed have that anger. they're uh, passionate. And is that anger? No. What is passionate? Just fire passionate. I would say that you are very passionate about being American or, or whatever that you stand for. You would consider yourself passionate. I would say <coughs> that the African-Americans, males or whoever it is that you see speaking out on CNN or whatever, uh, that they're passionate about their race and they're passionate about the liberation of African Americans and the empowerment and the advancements of African Americans. Define passion. I'm not a passionate person. Define okay. that for me. Uh, so if they find a deep love for something, they will do any and everything to exercise that, that love. Right, man. Yeah. Do real men complain about other people? Complaining? I see where you're referring to. But is it, is it complaining or is it just stating a fact? 
do real men complain about other people and the situations they have to deal with? Do real men complain about that? Those things? Uh, I would say they acknowledge it. Do they complain about it? They acknowledge it. Now, how about complaining? Okay. Uh, complaining also has a negative connotation. So if, <laughs> if I'm complaining, I'm, I'll be complaining like, oh, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. There are people that are complaining to give me. me a, give me a yes or no. Do real men complain about situations in life? No. Do real men complain about so-called racism? Uh, they acknowledge racism. Do real men complain about so-called racism? They, well, actually, you know what? Yes. Real men yes, do. Yes, because you know why? Because they can't fix it. They, a real man can't fix it? They can't fix racism. Why not? African-American men can't why not? fix racism because they didn't create racism. Is it because they're not real men? No, it's because they didn't create it. But if racism whoever is... Cre whoever created it... You know it, I don't believe racism exists, right? It doesn't exist. What? But if racism <coughs> exists, why do black men do better? <coughs> what is, what is, what do you, why, do, why do you not think that racism exists? Because uh, you, you had said that to Tariq, and you said that there's no such thing as white supremacy as well. Right. So I want to... First, I want to talk about that. Why, why do you not think that there's racism? Because there's... I, because I can see that our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil, right and wrong. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with being a physical person. Interesting. But it's the spirit that made a home in you. Do you, do you agree with that? Uh, and I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. Okay. On a plantation. Okay. Black men didn't bitch and complain and cry racism like little girls back then, they overcame situations right. because they understood it was spiritual. How would they overcome Jim Crow? Uh, they did. How? By changing the law. Black people changed the law? Yeah. You know, okay. Martin Luther King was black. He changed, he changed it? Yeah. Okay. It was for Martin Luther King. <coughs> it would have been changed, not back at that time. Okay. Do well, you agree or disagree? Well, Martin Luther King was very passive. Do you Dr. agree King. or disagree so, with that? I would, you I said would. Dr. King was passive? Yes. He was weak? Very much so. Uh, not weak. I said passive. Passive is weak for a man. I wouldn't say that. Passive is strength. Passive is not strength. Strength, but uh, being passive is allowing your oppressor to do what they would like to do to you. Your and, oppressor? Yes. And what did they do to Martin Luther King that he should not have allowed? Um, what they did to him? Uh -huh. He's dead. What did they do <laughs> to him about? that he should not have allowed? That he While being allowed, alive, yes. Uh, being treated uh, disrespectfully, getting thrown in jail over, over 30 times. Oh, so you don't of, support Dr. King? I didn't say I don't support Dr. Do King. Do you support him? I do support Dr. King, but all I'm saying is there's different ways that he could have went about it. I'm more of the, the, the Malcolm X way or the, the Marcus Garvey, Stukely Carmichael, Huey P. Newton way. So Malcolm X uh, went to uh, uh, Mecca. Right. And he had sat on the, the, the yes. ministry uh, uh, Muhammad, what's that minister's name? Louis Farrakhan. Yeah, all those people. Right. And he realized <laughs> that he had been lied to by those people, that it wasn't about racism, it's not about racism, it's about character. Right. He came back and he corrected them right. and he was taken out for them. Right. And he it was a, said that Louis Farrakhan and others took him out mm -hmm. because he had a change of heart, believing that it's not about the color, it's about the character. That, there right. are good white people and bad white people, good black people and bad black people. Right. You like that about Malcolm X? Uh, Malcolm X. And uh, that's what the quality you like about him? Let me, let me explain. Uh, Malcolm X has been through stages. Malcolm X started as Malcolm Little, which was the Malcolm X that right. was selling. Yeah, I wrote about him in my book, that, right? The Antidote and Scam, I believe. But. <coughs> then, he, then he was Malcolm X and then he was Malik. Uh, what was it? El, El Hash Shabazz yeah, or something, something, like, that something like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not to butcher his name or anything. But the Malcolm X is who I agree with. The radical one. Was he radical? And that's the one you're talking about, though? Um, yeah, Malcolm X. Uh, okay. Yeah, not, not the Mecca Malcolm X. Amazing. So, real fast. Amazing. What is a man? What is a man? A man is somebody that takes accountability for himself and, and is responsible and knows how to manage his emotions. What is love? I'm trying to define that right now, man. I'm only 20, man. Come on. Uh, okay. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. So you have something for me. I do. Okay. I do. I have a calendar right here, right? All right. So for this is for 2019. All right. <laughs> a good friend of mine, Jamal Brown, he works at Antelope Valley College. Um, he makes these calendars, and he also has a Hispanic calendar like this. Do you have a white one? No, he does not. I don't know if he plans on it, though. Uh. You right. know that Mexicans hate black people, right? They do not. Yes, they do. Yeah, you you talking because we up in L.A. right now, so yeah, the, the L.A. Mexicans do not like 
African Americans. They Angelo Valley Mexicans like blacks. Oh yeah, we 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 decent. We but cool. they don't really like now, you're you. You're saying you just said Mexicans don't like black people. Not all, not all, not all. But okay, most. you gotta spe- you right. Know, you gotta not specify all. that. But you do know that most Mexicans don't like black it's people. It's definitely not most Mexicans because a, a lot of Mexicans or people of uh, Hispanic heritage or are black. You go to. They still don't like black people. But anyway, never, finish this real fast. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's another conversation. <laughs> what this calendar is, is a calendar of uh, African American people that are innovators and creators or whatever. And for and this is and this is the brother right here. Um, but what it is is, you will go to your calendar. This is January twenty, uh, January twenty nineteen. Uh huh. For each day, it's something that an African American has done or what they have contributed to society. Okay. So, you know, you might hear, uh, you know, this happened with this African American, blah, blah, blah. I want to definitely let you hold on to that because Thank you. it seems like you don't, not too well versed in African American history. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the last question, well, two last questions. What's most important to black people, morality or the physical accomplishments? I would say morality. Morality, so why the focus is not on that? It is on that. Black people don't, don't discuss morality at all. Uh, I would say African Americans in the conscious community, such as myself, we do. So you talk about being immoral and stuff like that? We talk about how to do the right thing for us. Oh, just for you? Uh, for no, us no, blacks? The, me, the, the blacks. end goal, the end goal is for all of us, blacks, white, Mexican, all that, to be right here. To be right here, right? Okay. But it's not like that right now. Because of blacks. <laughs> so African Americans are the reason for this country in the way that it is. Yes. Wow. Well, crazy. you are the reason, but white folks have blame too because they didn't correct you. How they correct? Okay. So that sounds like some daddy son stuff. Right. Yes. Because black people are not, for the most part, they don't self correct. You. You. Most blacks. No, you don't because you're, you're black. They don't self correct. You're and, black, though. And so they need white people to correct They do them. not need white people to do that. White, what? That's crazy. Do you love white people? I love all people, man. I, man, I don't, look, I love white people. I don't like white supremacy. So do you love white people? Yes, I love white people. Do you love, there's no such thing as white supremacy? There is. But do you love white supremacy? Uh, absolutely not. Do you love no one? Do I love no one? If you don't love all people, you love no one. That's de- okay. So you don't you don't like uh, gay people. I, I I love gay people. We just you just said. I just don't agree with the lifestyle. I show them how to overcome. Okay. But I don't hate them. Okay. Well, it's not something to overcome. It's not like a sickness or anything. You can't overcome that. If, can you overcome heterosexuality? Yeah, so, that's not the same. I don't really that's want their to sexual overcome. preference, though. So you don't believe as a Christian, you don't believe that they can overcome homosexuality. That's what they want to do. Do you believe they can overcome it? No, because that's a sexual preference. It's not like a It's a preference. Illness. Can they change the preference if they yeah, want they to? Yeah, they can change the preference. You so can say, you can can say over- right now that you're So gay. then they can overcome it, right? But you're, you're saying overcoming in terms of something's wrong with them. No, I'm asking you, do you believe that they can overcome it if they change their sexual preference? Because it is about sex. It's not about family. It's not about love. It's not about civil rights. You, I agree with you. Okay. I agree. Amazing. Oh, amazing. amazing. That's amazing. That's right. Wow. I agree with you that they can change their section preface and change from it, right? Um, yes. There um, are. I, I'll say that uh, as growing up as Jehovah's Witness, <coughs> we've heard stories like yes, that. We that's have. Right. But that's right. But does that make it right that they? Does that make it right though that they change? Yeah. Yes. How so? They have a better chance for a great life. Oh, so because they, when they change, they return back to God. I got to ask you this. Go ahead. Did you have fun? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. We have, two for... defini- we have two different definitions of fun. Oh, we do? I had a, I, this is a hell of an experience. I'll say that. It is? In what way? <laughs> In what way? You're an interesting character, man. In what way? I have to, you're a very interesting character. Uh, in many, multiple ways. One quick thing. Do you disagree with me on anything? Everything you said, I disagree with. Really? Like, give me yeah. one. Uh, oh, let me put it this way. Was I wrong on anything I said? Yeah. Give me one. There's no racism? Right. It doesn't exist. Right. That's, that's what you said. All I right. totally, totally dispute that, right. that argument. But Thank that's you. why I came on the show. Yeah. I wanted to clarify because when you got, you know, 
people that say the rhetoric that you say, then a lot of people will believe that if they don't know the, the truth. No, I, you know what I'm saying? Josh, so, thanks for coming. Thank you. For, thank you for having me. I yeah. appreciate that. Will you come back again? Uh, depends. On what? I got to bring some people, man. <laughs> All right. I need some backup. You got to bring some backup. Bring some backup. some backup. Bring the army. I got to. Uh, <laughs> I got to. Man. Why you need backup? I need backup, man, because you be saying some crazy stuff, man. <laughs> man, you, you, are a, you are an army in yourself. Like, just you yourself. You are 10,000 white supremacists in, inside of you. So <laughs> I, I got to bring... I gotta bring some brothers that are down with the conscious community. Some black supremacists? Nah, I'm not black supremacists. Uh, not black supremacists. All right, thank some you, man. Black Panthers. Oh, your yeah. father was a black Panther. No, right? my uncle was a black Panther. Oh, your uncle here in L.A.? Yeah, he started. He started uh, one of the founding members of the L.A. chapter. Really? Yeah. Where is he now? Uh, he lives. He lives down there with me. Really? Yeah. He it, lives down in. He lives in Little Rock. Is he city. a good example for you? Excellent example. Wow. That's how, to stand, how to stand up for your people. The way you stand up for whoever you are with, your American side and whatever, I, I stand up. He, that, he teaches us, me how to stand up for. I'm sorry to hear people. that, man. You sorry to hear that? Yeah. yeah but, but we'll talk about that next time you come. Okay. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Uh, don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, comment. Uh, we have merch on the Father State. Every dime we get goes back into making it happen. I really appreciate hearing from you. So thank you again for tuning in. Amazing. That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. 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 That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.